My name is Rob. I'm gonna walk through some of the black magic that went into making. making so, like regarding the transitions and, and just a lot of the effects, the warping effects, going like either between scenes or within just just kind of injections within the scene itself. How'd you go about hitting those up? The analog effects broke down into three categories, and the editing was just hyper editing, uh, snipping between different takes. You group them together so you have like two to three seconds of footage and you have your three takes layered in the timeline. You get this kind of visual phrasing. So the first effect I decided upon was just uh, keeping a loose connection in the back of the VCR for the video feed. And then I'm kind of rocking the whole unit to kind of just get a slight amount of control with the amount of effects I want it to have on what's going on. Like the whole image translates upwards and the colors kind of melt together and bend and warp and just displace. The second, uh, the second thing I decided upon was just taking off the top of the VCR itself and just messing with the tape heads and tensioning it differently and hitting the spindles that are spinning in there and that produces kind of like a color splitting, almost tearing effect. And then when they recover, the whole thing kind of statics out and then it warps and tries to get itself back into place. And I just thought that was a cool kind of disorienting, kind of nauseating look. And then the final, uh, the final effect was a focal, kind of a focal shift. So I just take the lens of the camera in front of the television and I just, change the focal length of the lens, and you get this color webbing. One of the few software effects I used, which I call dither editing, you're alternating between two different takes or two different scenes. You have kind of the male character coming down, assuming the same pose as the female. It's kind of like, as he's coming down, you change the dither pacing, and you tighten it up, or you loosen it but we also did it between different analog takes. And you have that dither kind of cut in and out, then you get this interesting kind of effect, and it's inexpensive, easy to use everywhere, it just takes a little bit of time, but it ultimately works. Uh, that's it. The transitions and effects between the scenes and stuff like that, how does that like fit in with, with what you're trying to achieve visually and how it reflects the soundtrack? First time I heard it in October, I thought, I thought it was kind of unusual for that to be the single. Um, and I noticed that there's kind of like this dichotomy fight of, uh, it's like introversion. You have personal distortions that you go through. Everything's fine one minute and everything's chaotic the next. And then everything, I don't know what's real anymore, one moment. And I don't know if I should believe what I'm coming back to. Like find a couple ways to illustrate that kind of dichotomy of emotional waves you go through. You break a TV. No. What the fuck? You see this outline, this blue outline of the analog kind of slightly faded in. That's kind of like him confronting this mindset that he's been trying to escape from. Smashing the TV is kind of his way of just saying fuck you to himself. And he's just trying to find a way to stop the cycle, come back and connect with everything again. In a struggle with yourself, you're never really sure when you win and when you lose. You know, that's the whole point of this whole project. That's the whole point of the emotion that's riding behind it. So how did the art direction of uh, the band feed into the process of making this video? <laughs> I mean, I've been following his work for a while, Rob Sheridan's work for a while, and I always thought it was kind of just, it kind of catered to itself certain degree of just, uh, it's visceral, it's real, it's just physically just how to destroy angels came about and then as that matured as well, uh, the art direction kind of changed into more of like a sort of analog glitch and I thought that was an interesting way to kind of get things going. Just kind of that lo-fi filter on top of everything and just the unpredictable nature of the distortions that go on about it. Yeah. Um, take that emotion of that loss of self-identity and illustrate that with kind of just that analog kind of veil over everything. You can't just tweak this and get 
X result, you kind of you take the back of the VCR and you leave the connections kind of loose, and then you're rocking the VCR left and right or front to back. And <laughs> well, you mentioned how unforeseen some of the uh, like the outcomes would be based on what you would shoot. I guess how how meticulously were the scenes laid out in advance? Like, did you have like an idea going into it, or was it pretty much? It was really kind of just shoot this. We'll see if it works with glitching or not later. Um, if not, we'll cut around it. With the aesthetic in mind, and you're like, okay, I'll do the black stuff, and I'll reverse it so it runs up the face as she's singing the lyrics, and it's just kind of this cool dichotomy of time. And then you have the glitching coming into mind, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna do all these things later, or do part of the now, part of the later. There was a few sources of inspiration, one of which was the music video for The Hand That Feeds. The way that the camera kind of just seemed like it was a stationary-ish kind of setup, and you zoom into it in post, and you kind of just get that little soft, magnified image. And I think that worked as a good effect to kind of just highlight the action in a really economic way. We didn't have a bunch of lenses that we could use to manually zoom in on scene, and that's just part of the whole production budget, you know. And it worked. The music video for Deep was, you know, you can see the, the grime on the face from the toxic sludge. Adopt that aesthetic slightly and apply it to what's going on here. David Fincher's Dragon Tattoo for the black fluid. You look at something like this, and it's kind of hard to say that it's not influenced by and that feeds or spaces in between or deep or broken. And all those elements kind of came together consciously or subconsciously, and they just kind of made their way.